Hey, welcome. My name is Dr. TK, licensed clinical psychologist and therapist business coach. And in today's video, we will be covering three main things that you want to think about and consider while you are applying to psychology graduate programs. So let's go ahead and dive in. Hey, welcome. And so let's go ahead and jump into it. I do have my notes here on my phone because I want to make sure that I do not miss a beat in terms of what I want to share about the full application process for a psychology graduate program. So tip number one is know what you want. And so you want to get a clear picture of what do you want the end result to be in terms of what kind of school you want to go to. In another video that's on my YouTube channel, I cover certain tips, specifically five that you wanna consider before applying to school. But in this video, we'll get into what you want to understand and know while you're going through the application process. And so um, first things first, if you've never heard of a website called grad schools or graduateschools.com, I'll see if I can link it up and put it like on the bottom of the screen. But that's a website that I used to look up graduate school programs and get a full understanding in a one stop shop database of all the schools that I can shop for that will have what I desire in terms of what I'm looking for to apply. So when you are on websites like the graduate school or gradschools.com, these are some of the things that you want to do to narrow down your results. And so number one is you want to shop for a school similar to how you shop for clothes online. The goal of this is that you want to narrow down the list of schools so that you're not looking at schools that you're not interested in. So for example, if you wanted to only look at schools that had a campus-based lecture style environment, not online, then you can potentially click that box. Maybe you are open to a hybrid program where they do some stuff online and some stuff in person. So you just wanna narrow down how you're looking at the graduate schools. Also, what type of psychology graduate degree do you want to have? Do you wanna focus on clinical psychology, child and adolescent, psychological testing, neuropsychology. There are so many different types of graduate schools that you can go to, but you do wanna have an understanding of that before you go over to websites like this database. Um, now, once you start finding schools that you're interested in, I kid you not, please take notes on what to do and what not to do, okay? So first things first, be okay with requesting a packet. Now, when I was applying 15, 20 years ago at this point, they mailed us packets and we were able to look at a sample curriculum from the current cohort of students and of course, all the data of the campus, breaking down what type of degrees they offer, their uh, percentage of uh, people who graduate, their accreditation, all those things. But these days, they'll probably send it to you via email. So make sure that you're putting an email address in there that's not spam, that you actually check. Next thing, do not give them your real phone number. Certain schools, don't even treat you like a person. They will treat you like a number, no lie. So I've had my experience of applying to schools, or not applying yet, but expressing interest in schools and they called as bad as like somebody hunting you down to pay for a bill. So I would not give them my phone number until you commit to actually applying to the program. And then of course on your application, put your real phone number, a, a phone number that they can actually reach you. Um, research the level of accreditation that is required for the type of career in psychology that you want to have. And if certain jobs um, tell you on like indeed.com, cause you can go and look up jobs that you desire and work backward. If they tell you that, oh, it's required for you to have an APA accredited education, then that again means that you need to sort through these websites. Or if you're actually on a school specific website that you're interested in, go and find the accreditation. Do not take a guess, see it in writing and make sure that it's active, make sure that they're in good standing. If you don't find it, ask someone at the school. Um, and then also under these uh, graduate school databases is you wanna get clear on why you are applying to that particular school, what do they have that you like, and I would encourage you to make a list of all the things that attracted you to that school because it's gonna help you in the other two tips. 
tip number two is research professors and then when you decide to apply mention the professor if you're not already prompted to do so because some applications have that um, in you know inside the application mention the professor so for myself I knew that I wanted to work with children and adolescents at the time of applying to school so I looked through their um, professor database full-time and part-time faculty and I read their description because they have it on the website like a bio and I aligned myself with two people that I was interested in in regards to like the school that I actually start, um, end up going to and that person is the same person that they actually were able to pull into my interview so I don't know if they still do interviews in person these days I haven't researched that it's been a while since I've been out of school they may even you know especially at an online school they may or may not even have an application um, interview process you still have to apply but they may not meet you so that is not all bad but I actually enjoyed the interview process because especially going to campus it allowed me to connect with the ambiance of like the environment to even see if I felt good being in the space because I'm about to be here for four plus years you know and so make sure that you find a professor that is doing something that is of interest to your future in this field and then make sure that you mention them and their work meaning you have to read about them in your application um, also just when you're looking at the bios of the professor see if they have the specialty of the interest that you have and this person specifically worked with children who were misdiagnosed with ADHD specifically black and brown children in the inner city and that attracted me because that's what I used to say all the time because I was working in a group home and that's what I would see over and over again so I'm like there has to be another way to serve these kids and that is what initially attracted me to that professor that grew into a relationship in terms of me taking her classes I end up working in her practicum site during a summer session and she ended up being the person who oversaw my exiting exam it's also called an oral exam with a case vignette when I had to leave and she was a tough professor but I'm very glad that I met her in the beginning phase of applying to the program Tip number three is see if you can talk to current students, not students who have graduated, current students. So the way that our program was set up and I became part of this process because I was part of student government over time is that we were involved in the application process, meaning we would sit in on parts of the interview. Now, if this is not automatically offered, ask them, can you speak to a current student alone? alone so here are some tips why you want to talk to current grad students alone all right so one ask them um why did they choose the school what attracted them to the school and how long have they been at the school because you want to gauge for any changes for the good or maybe some things that they don't agree with but i'm not saying go and talk to these students and just poke around and ask for stuff that's bad because when you look for bad stuff you find bad stuff okay um also you want to ask them specifically what is their classroom experience because that's really what we are measuring right if we are going there to get a higher level education is what is the class size like does it vary based on topic um how long are the classes uh, from their perspective, even though you can see a list of all the classes that you have to take, what is the actual curriculum like to them? Maybe even ask them, especially if it's a doctoral program, can they tell you a little bit about their background with where they went to school before coming here? And then if they are already in practicum or internship site, what are their, just, just have a conversation, like what are their thoughts about that? How does the school prep for a practicum, internship, graduation? if you want to know about the dissertation process just write down all the questions that you would want to ask a current student now here's another thing that I was able to do they embedded this in our application process or interview process when I went to go visit the school that I end up going to they also allowed us to sit in a classroom so it just so happens that I went on a day where their other classes were four hours because we only went one day a week um, to each class and so they allowed me to sit in a ethics class now because it was ethics I was only able to sit in 50% of the class for about 45 minutes and then when they start talking about actual cases I had to leave which makes sense and that spoke volumes to me off the bat just because it showed me how serious that the professor and the students took the confidentiality to protect 
the clients that either he was presenting in class and or maybe some students were already seeing clients. And that just spoke to, okay, you all are following guidelines that eventually I would have to learn for my licensure. And then lastly, you wanna ask any current students, do they just have any general tips for new students coming in? Like maybe what are some things that they wished that they would have known, learned, or been exposed to before they started their doctoral program? So I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. I wanted to get straight to the point. If you want to learn more about the graduate school process, I've recorded a video on, for example, how to get how to become a clinical psychologist in 2022. But even though it is not 2022 and it's 2023, at the time of this recording, you can still go back and watch that video. It's not time bound. It just is the video that came out that year. And then I've also recorded other videos if you want to learn more about the practicum process or even things that you want to consider before before even applying to school because in this video we talked about the actual application process. If you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comment box below. If you liked any of these tips, let me know in the comment box what was your favorite one. And if you are new or a returning viewer, I want to say thank you for tuning into the video today. Please make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content around future psychologists, future mental health providers. And if you are a person where you're already in the field, this channel also talks about full life abundance while being in the helping profession, while also being authentic to who you are, showing up as your best self and designing an abundant lifestyle. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.